Good afternoon. Thank you for joining this session. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thanks for joining us. Since folks are still popping in. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button at the um, bottom of your screen to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions happening over the next few weeks, so be sure to check out the full schedule at cacro.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, cacro.org. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Really um, excited to be here with you. Uh, on behalf of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, I'd like to thank uh, CACRO as well as StriveSkin for allowing us to connect with you all virtually while we wish we could be visiting your schools, your communities, or welcoming you to the Carolina community. We um, are thankful that we're able to still connect with you virtually. Uh, we know that um, there's a lot of things going on in your local community nationally and we really appreciate you taking the time to still consider your options and do some research on Carolina. Uh, I will go ahead and share my screen as we begin our presentation for this afternoon. Um, so again our, our time together will provide an overview of Carolina and we will dive into the uh, application process that hopefully will be helpful to you. We know you've done a a lot of research and as you consider your college options, we are honored that you're considering Carolina. And I will click over. All right, so just a little bit about who's here today. Um, I am Maria Lofton. I'm a senior assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions um, at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, excited to present to you all and share a little bit about our university. I am here with two of my colleagues that will be assisting and answering a lot of your questions through the chat. Um, and then at the end, hopefully, we will also have time for some live Q&A uh, where I can answer some questions. But I want to acknowledge that two of my wonderful colleagues are here, Alex Wadsworth and Carla Salas, who um, are both assistant directors in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Um, so we're all a resource uh, to help you during this process um, as you consider your college options. To begin, a little bit about the University of North Carolina. We are proudly public. We are the first public university in the nation. We really do take pride in that, right? The way um, our founding, our, our mission as an institution, being a public university does shape our mission, um, our vision, who we are as a university, and the type of experiences that our students are having. Uh, while we're proud of you, the first public institution, what we really emphasize in this idea of being a public university um, is that we are here uh, for the citizens of our state and those around us or around the world. So if you're looking for a place that um, is focused on public service, Carolina could be a great fit for you. The idea that when students come to Carolina, regardless of what they are interested in pursuing, whether health sciences, business, education, research, psychology, the list goes on and on. The idea is that our students are taking the mindset of how to pay it forward and make things better for others. Um, so if that's the mindset that you have or a space that you'd like to be part of, Carolina could be a good fit for you when you think about service, paying it forward and how to make things better for others, uh, regardless of what you wanna study. Um, at Carolina, when we receive your application, uh, we are not admitting students to a particular major or program. So whether you know exactly what you want to study, or maybe you're considering different options during this time, that's okay. All of our students are first admitted to Carolina, our College of Arts and Sciences, and then as you transition to campus and become a Carolina student, you will have the resources, support services to help you declare your major um, as early as that first semester, or typically most of our students are declaring their major in their sophomore year or applying to one of our professional schools that we have. As you consider your college options, academic fit is a really important part, but we also hope that you're thinking about the community, who you're gonna learn with, live with, be a leader on campus. And that should be an important part of your decision making, um, where you're deciding to attend, it's this idea of community. At Carolina, every year we're dedicated and we want to build a class of students that are only gonna add, make us better as a community. So when we're looking at an application, we're getting to know you or get a glimpse into who you are as an individual, we are hoping to get to know a little bit about what you may contribute to the academic classroom, to the larger community through involvement, potentially student leadership. Um, and we are excited that we do have a commitment to this idea of the type of community that we're building. So we are looking for smart, 
bright, motivated students, but we recognize that people show those talents in different ways. So we're hoping to see that within your application because that's only going to add to the type of students that we have in our campus community. We recognize the students have different stories, experiences, and we're going to embrace that on our campus community. So the idea that we are welcoming and excited to see students who are first in their families to go to college, students that are coming from different parts of the state of North Carolina and beyond whether South Carolina or other parts of our country and even globe. The idea that as a university, we do have a commitment to even thinking about students that are coming from different countries. They're adding to the campus community, they're adding to how we're learning um, and getting to know each other. Um, so think about who will be part of your community and the idea that, that is valuable uh, to our institution and the type of students that we want to welcome at UNC. Another piece of our campus community would be this idea of the collaborative spirit. So while we are welcoming students that are eager to learn, that are already making a difference in their classroom, in their community, we are also hoping um, that when students come to Carolina, they take this collaborative approach. And that's what our students really emphasize, that they know that they are learning and living with other smart, curious uh, students, but they're doing better when they work together. So the idea at Carolina is that you're gonna work with others, you're gonna embrace different ways of learning perspectives, and that's gonna help you as you think about your uh, academic career pathway or the professional things that you want to pursue. A lot of students at Carolina, as I mentioned, are not admitting students to a particular major. So the idea is we wanna give you time to explore and really think about what you wanna study. We have many students that choose to pursue a double major or maybe a major or minor. So there is flexibility in the curriculum. The idea that at an institution like Carolina, um, there's gonna be a lot of resources to help you. So we encourage and we want you to start thinking about how you are taking initiative and to continue to do that in your college setting. You're gonna have an academic advisor that you get to work with, really lean on the support of our faculty and staff that wanna see you succeed and are not just there to, to teach you in the classroom, but truly want to invest time and get to know you um, as a student. And when you think about exploration and growing, um, beyond just your academic requirements, we're also wanting you to think about um, specific experiences like an internship, potentially doing research, or studying abroad. Uh, many of our students emphasize and talk about how those experiences outside of the classroom only help in feeling connected, stepping out of their comfort zone and learning from others throughout their undergraduate career. As I mentioned, um, you know, we, we do offer over 70 majors that range from health sciences, humanities, social sciences, uh, and, you know, maybe I'm reiterating this fact a little too much, but while, when you are welcome to Carolina, it's going to be to the College of Arts and Sciences, but we do recognize that students do come to Carolina already with a major or an interest in mind. So here you can see for this year's entering class, our first year students that are at Carolina, uh, the interest that they had. Um, so some are pursuing free health tracks, others are thinking about law. Um, we do have our Keen Flagler Business School. Uh, students are pursuing research. 60% of our undergraduate students are thinking about uh, research, whether um, in STEM, so science, technology, engineering, or math, or even beyond that. Um, and even as I mentioned, all our students are admitted to the general college, which essentially is undecided. That is also one of our top career interests that student have that students have at this time. They're still thinking, considering what they can pursue. I mean, that's the great thing about Carolina, regardless of what you wanna study, you're gonna have time to explore, but also you're gonna be at an institution that's offering some excellent, top-ranked, um, strong programs that are gonna help you really clarify and decide what you wanna do. I um, mean, regardless of what you wanna study, you're gonna be well-prepared and supported. I'll shift now to thinking about our application process. Um, the idea that we know in your senior year, you're really busy, there's a lot of changes that have happened in your academic environment, um, and even in, in your, your regular day-to-day -day life, we acknowledge that in the application process um, and want to know and recognize that you're spending a lot of time um, in your application. We are doing the same when we receive your application. We value what you share, um, and we're looking at all parts of the application to get to know you as a student. When we receive an application, we don't have an ideal student in mind. The idea that we recognize that students have different opportunities, academic settings that they're coming from, different interests, and we're gonna recognize that in the application process. We're looking for reasons to say yes in the application. Um, the idea that what you share will be valuable to our review. Uh, the biggest advice that we give students is 
take the time to reflect and share what you've been able to accomplish or even things that motivate you as you think about pursuing um, and going off to college. So when you start looking at our application requirements and completing the application, the idea that we value and look at all components before we make our decisions. Uh, we know that you are investing time in the classroom, you're taking advantage of the rigor that's available, but also beyond that, you're involved within your community, whether that's academic related or not, um, whether that's personal or professional, um, and we want to take the time to see that within your application. So here you can see parts of the application, and if you have specific questions, feel free to submit them, but hopefully I'll be able to touch on um, each part of the application just quickly to acknowledge um, what we require or potentially advice that would be helpful to you during this time. Um, so parts of the application, and this um, recognizes both first year and transfer applications, we recognize there's different pathways to Carolina, and you can see what's required um, for first or transfer applications, and then specifically if there's something different um, for our first year applications. To begin, we do accept applications through both common application or coalition application. We don't have a preference, the idea that you select the application portal that's going to be the best fit for you. Um, it may depend on the schools that are a part of those portals that you can apply to, um, or maybe the essay prompts. There are um, different prompts for common application or coalition that we um, that may influence which application you'd like to submit. But when you begin the application, one of the first um, questions or things that you'll see um, would be that application fee or fee waiver. So we do accept the fee waiver, so please connect with your counseling team to make sure that you are eligible for that waiver and to get that submitted. Um, in addition to that, if you are a student that lives in the state of North Carolina and you are a North Carolina resident, you will have an additional application component, which is the residency application. So that's apart from what you're submitting through common application or coalition, and it is to residency determination services. And essentially that is um, confirming and clarifying that you are a resident from the state of North Carolina. I'm going to provide with a residency certification number, a 10-digit RCN. And we require that for our evaluation. Our North Carolina public universities will require that. And the reason for that is as a public institution in the state of North Carolina, our enrolling class, which is about 42 to 4,400 uh, 4, first-year students, is made up of 82% of students coming from the state of North Carolina and 18% out of state. So that residency application confirms that you are residing in the state of North Carolina, um, and also uh, if you're admitted and choose to enroll for tuition purposes. As you move through the application, um, there will be a section on extracurricular activities. So the idea of what are you doing outside of your academic requirements where you're dedicating time, um, hopefully where you're showing and, and choosing to genuinely be involved. And for us at Carolina, we're looking for a certain number of service hours um, or that you hold a particular title in an organization. Truly, it's a space for you to think about what have you done throughout your high school career or throughout your academic journey that you think would be helpful for us to know? Um, we see this as a way of how are you managing your time? You're succeeding in the classroom while also staying engaged in things that you enjoy. We also know with activities, high school may be a time where you've explored different things. So you're uh, taking advantage of different opportunities throughout your um, academic journey. And for others, maybe you've really been able to think about those one to three activities that you really enjoy, you've dedicated and invested significant time in. So think about what you're doing within your school community, your local community, that would be helpful for us to think about your impact, potentially your leadership and involvement. Um, and activities could be through clubs and organizations, service, part-time employment, maybe significant family responsibilities. So really think about all things that you're doing, where you're spending time, investing, um, where it's going to show a little bit of your involvement um, and engagement. We do require a total of three essays. So one would be that long essay that I mentioned that's going to be through the common application or coalition application. And then we do require two UNC short answers. So for all of these writing um, formats, there are prompts to guide your writing. And those prompts are there to just help you brainstorm or think about topics that you want to share. Um, you're not limited or we're not looking for a specific answer in your essays. Really think about the essay and the short answers as going beyond the surface. The idea that you won't interview with Carolina, so this is a way for us to hear your voice, perspective, 
and experiences. Um, so think about what story or stories you want to share through your writing that are going to help us get to know you, maybe your way of thinking or experiences that you've had that would be helpful to know about. Um, another component that's unique to Car the UNC supplemental application would be Excel at Carolina. And for this particular section, this allows you to express interest in special opportunities that you may be looking forward to or that would be helpful as you transition to college. So Excel at Carolina includes honors, our Honors Carolina program where you can indicate interest in that program um, and other opportunities to be assured enrollment into some of our professional schools like the Gilling School of Global Public Health um, or School of Education, Journalism and Media. There's some dual degree programs and then we also have uh, opportunities to study abroad fellowship, research fellowship. So really think and review those opportunities within Excel that you can express interest and be automatically considered through our evaluation process. Some additional components you're going to seek support and speak with your school or counselor um, would be one, the letter of recommendation. So we do require one letter of recommendation from a teacher in one of your core subject classes. So think about a teacher that has taught you in English, math, social science, science, or even a foreign or world language, where you think and know that they're gonna take the time to write a personalized letter about you. We really do value that letter of recommendation. They're gonna validate what you've already shared in your own words through your application, or they may add or provide new insight that you didn't recognize yourself for within um, your experiences or application. So think about someone that's really gonna dedicate time to write a strong personalized letter about you. Now, as I mentioned, we only require one letter, so maybe you're thinking, I really have another teacher, a coach, a mentor, that I really, really also want to be part of my application review. If you really feel that that additional recommendation letter will add or provide new insight, you are welcome to submit more than one. We're also going to request a secondary school statement. This is provided from your school counselor or counseling team. Um, and that statement allows us to better understand um, your school setting. So they're going to provide a school profile or additional information to understand the academic offerings at your school um, or just additional context to help us understand what's offered, what you've been able to take advantage of um, to, to get a better sense of, of your academic setting. Um, and then that final piece where you're going to request support would be that transcript. So we do require an official academic transcript um, in order for us to see your grades and performance throughout high school or if you're considering transferring both high school and your college uh, records or, or academic history. Um, and for transcripts, when we receive your official transcript, uh, we're not focused on GPA or class rank. The idea that that doesn't provide us with enough context. Um, we see and know that schools don't even have GPA or class ranks, or some are on a weighted or unweighted scale or have different ways of calculating that. So truly, when we receive our academic official high school transcript, we're looking at year to year classes that you've taken, the rigor and how you've performed throughout your high school um, or college career if you're considering transferring. Um, and as you can see, what you submit as a student, that's due by the application deadline, which I'll highlight in a few minutes. And then the student request section, these are things that we know you're working with others, like a teacher, a counselor, to get this information submitted, so it will take more time, okay? As I transition, um, we, as you saw on the previous slide, there was no um, official requirement for SAT or ACT this year. So if you're planning to apply for fall 2021 admission, there is a waiver where you will not be required to submit the SAT or ACT score. So uh, as a university that's part of the University of North Carolina system, the system put in place that there is a one-year waiver for those test scores due to uh, the disruptions and things that happened with COVID-19. We know that a lot of exams have been canceled. Maybe some of you haven't been able to retake the exam or have the opportunity to take it at all. And we don't want any student to feel that they are at a disadvantage uh, because they haven't been able to take these exams or have had to take them at a time with a lot of disruptions or they haven't been able to fully prepare as they would have liked or thought that they would be able to. So please know there's a waiver for that test score requirement. It's not required this year. Um, and if you're thinking or considering, well, should I submit it or not? Ultimately up to you. One thing about our evaluation process is it is a holistic, comprehensive individual review. The idea that even before this waiver existed and as we continue to review applications, Testing has also always been one of many factors that we're looking at. It doesn't make our decisions. We don't automatically admit or deny 
based on a number or a score, um, but it is a factor for us to understand and see your academic performance or um, academic success overall. So this year, if you're planning to apply for fall 2021 admission for first year transfer, you have the decision to make if you'd like to provide those scores. Um, and we're only accepting or able to review self-reported scores. So within the common application or coalition, you can self-report those scores or after submitting, which I'll highlight those deadlines, there you are gonna have the option to create a My Carolina account. And you're gonna have some time to submit those self-reported scores. Other updates that may be important to recognize due to COVID-19 um, would be that the Common Application as well as Coalition is gonna have an optional section for you to provide an open-ended response if there have been any disruptions that you or your family um, have faced due to COVID-19. So this is just an open space where you can highlight and share additional information regarding COVID-19. And it's up to you. Um, and again, it's an optional space if you'd like to provide that information. Um, other updates to consider as you complete your application would be grades and performance. We know that spring semester, as well as maybe even this fall, um, academics are continuing to look a little different. Maybe you are learning in a hybrid style, only remote, or a combination of different ways that have been different from your previous years. Um, maybe your school has given the option or put in place um, some different ways to record your academic performance. We understand that, we're aware of that across the state of North Carolina and beyond, um, that things are looking differently at schools. So please just continue to stay healthy, work hard and do your best in the classroom. Um, in general, there's the additional information section in the application and that's an open space for you to share anything that you think would be helpful for us to get to know or understand about your academic history or things that have happened throughout your um, high school or college career. And then the final piece just to um, reflect on or to reassure you that we're aware of these things would be potentially canceled activities. We know that uh, things looked a little differently this past spring and may um, be impacting or continuing to impact some things that you were hoping to do. Maybe annual events, um, things that you were looking forward to within your community, within your school, clubs and organizations didn't happen and that's okay. You're welcome to share that, what your plan was, or we, we just acknowledge and understand that um, things will not be the same. All right, here you can see our deadlines. Um, so we have both our first year and then we'll highlight transfer as well. Um, for our first year deadlines, we do have two deadlines, which is both early action and regular decision. Um, and both of these deadlines are non-binding. So what that means is um, that you are not committed to attending Carolina if you're offered admission to Carolina. For both of these deadlines, students have until May 1, as you can see, which is our deadline to enroll to decide if Carolina is gonna be the best fit for you. I'm we'll talking about financial aid, um, which includes a pass on the CSS profile at UNC Chapel Hill, but the priority deadline for that is March 1. Um, the idea is we offer two deadlines because we know students have different needs in the application process. If you really feel that Carolina could be a good fit for you, you're confident and ready to submit by October 15th, we encourage you to go ahead and submit that application by that deadline. And um, we'll talk about the time when you're gonna receive your decision. Here are our transfer deadlines. We know that students have different needs or um, pathways to Carolina, I should say, and one of them is to transfer. So uh, if after a year or two at another um, college, whether two year or four year, and you still think that Carolina is the best fit for you, students can transfer to USC. And our application deadline is February 15th. We only offer one deadline to apply, and you can see that the deadline to enroll is May 15th. So here's a slide just acknowledging when students can expect to receive a decision based on the timeline of when they apply. So if you apply by October 15th, which is the early action deadline, you can expect to receive your decision at the end of January. We uh, release decisions at once. So um, applying by October 15th, please know all students will receive their decision at the end of January. If you apply by January 15th, which is our regular decision deadline, students will receive their uh, admission decision at the end of March. And then students that are planning to transfer will receive their decision um, in the month of April. Um, I, I just want to acknowledge for the deadline of October 15th and January 15th, what we require by the application deadline, October 15th or January 15th, would be your completed common application uh, or coalition application, 
and your application fee or fee waiver. If you recall, there was a section that said student request. So what we allow additional time, um, which is November 1, or two weeks after the application deadline for early action, would be the transcripts, the uh, recommendation letter, those optional, or excuse me, those, those test scores if you'd like to self-report those. Uh, we're working with students because we know maybe you're taking an exam during this time, or you're working again with your school and counseling team to provide us additional scores. So please know the application deadline, what we require for you to meet that deadline would be your completed application, application fee or fee waiver. Um, and then we also want to make sure that we discuss and, and talk about financial aid. Um, so part of our mission as a public institution um, is to be affordable. We know that thinking about your future, um, your, your education, finances is, is a, probably a conversation you all are having as a family, thinking about what's going to be affordable. When students apply to Carolina, we're automatically considering students for those Excel at Carolina opportunities that I highlighted, as well as our scholarships. So please know that is automatically considered a part of our review and we're looking at the full application. Um, so it's not based on a test score or just your transcript. We are truly looking at the full application to make our admissions offers, but also the scholarship considerations. Um, in addition to that, when we receive an application, we do read need blind. The idea that we're not aware of a student's need to attend Carolina. But once a student is admitted, our Office of Scholarships and Student Aid is need aggressive. The idea that we are committed to meeting a student's full demonstrated need. And what we need <laughs> in order to provide that would be your completed free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. And at UNC Chapel Hill, we do require the CSS profile, which is found on the College Board website. And that allows us, or our Office of Scholarships and Student Aid, to award you with federal or institutional aid that will make it affordable to attend UNC Chapel Hill, whether you are from North Carolina or out of state. Um, these are resources that are here for you to help this be affordable for you. Um, what you need to do, um, the month of October, the FAFSA and the CSS profile will open. So you can go ahead and start as a family working on those applications to allow you to be eligible for federal aid and institutional aid credited to UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and then as you can see, the priority deadline is March 1 to complete that information. Um, and there are resources that are available through the Office of Scholarships and Student Aid, as well as our website, admissions.unc.edu, to look over those scholarships, as well as the resources for uh, financial aid, as well as scholarship opportunities. So I will um, transition to questions. I know my colleagues have been asking questions during this, or answering questions during this time. Um, Alex, I don't know if there's anything you think I should answer in the larger group setting? Yeah, sure, Maria. Um, it's just some questions in here about um, the testing policy this year and advice we give to students who aren't sure whether they should submit their SAT or ACT scores, how will they'll be evaluated, if it'll hurt their application or help their application. Um, so it might be helpful just to go over that again. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Um, so with, with the test waiver, what does that mean? Or, or you know, are we having any question like what to do in that scenario? Um, the test waiver, what was put in place by the UNC system due to those disruptions, um, as I was mentioning, um, maybe some of you ideally were planning to retake it or haven't yet had, even had the opportunity to take it once. And we don't want to disadvantage or limit you to your options based on that one um, application requirement that previously has been required. Um, so for you, you know, for us, testing has always been one of many factors. Um, it helps to understand your overall academic history, performance, and how you're doing. Um, you, you all, if you're planning to apply for fall 2021, do now have the option to decide, do you want to provide those scores or not? Um, for us, we, you know, it doesn't um, drive our decision in any way. It only helps to see overall your application. Um, so I know you. it is a different scenario to be in where you can choose if you wanna provide the score. Um, the best advice that we give is just one of many factors that we look at. Um, you decide if you want to submit that. Um, and I just wanna reiterate the timeline of when we can receive it. Um, 
and when we know that it can be part of our evaluation. So one, if you've previously provided us with official scores, we will not use those. We know that maybe you intended to retake or now you're reconsidering if you even want us to look at that. We are not looking at any official scores uh, SAT or ACT official scores that you submitted. The only scores that we will look at is if you self-reported those scores in your common or coalition application or after you receive your My Carolina account access, self-reporting them there through the portal. Um, so just make sure that if you want scores to be provided that they're self-reported to us. Um, and then also just the timeline. Um, so our first deadline is October 15th. Obviously you can submit it with your completed application or you have until November 1 to provide us with additional self-reported scores. Uh, we will continue to super score. So if you submit um, and self-report all exams, if you've taken it more than once, then we will still super score for both SAT and ACT. Uh, you know, again, we just given that it's just one of the many things we're looking at, it's hard to say if you should or shouldn't provide it. Um, just re realize and, and remember and know that as a committee, it's only one of many things that we're looking at and it's not a deciding factor in our evaluation. Um, I'll extend the, the testing question just to AP exams, IB scores. Uh, we do not require those for our evaluation. It's never been required for our review. Um, if you'd like to provide those, you can self-report them in the application or submit those official AP exam or IB exam scores. But again, it's always um, been an option for students in our evaluation. Any other questions that you think would be helpful in the larger group setting? Um, so Maria, just some questions for maybe some of our students out of state. Um, are we looking for anything separate in the application process? Um, is there anything that they can do? And how do we consider students to be out of state? I think it's more about the residency question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. So I shared earlier um, that as a public university, uh, the enrolling class, which this year was about 4,400 students, first year students, 82% um, of those students are coming from the state of North Carolina and 18% out of state. So definitely understand the question of, well, um, if it's a smaller enrolling class that's coming from out of state, how does that impact your evaluation or what you're looking for? Uh, we are still taking the holistic comprehensive review that we're looking at all components of your application to make a decision. Um, you know, to, to be transparent as the numbers share, um, we are just limited to the number of students that we can offer admission to out of state just due to that um, system rule that's been in place. Um, the best advice there is to really maximize and think about the full application um, as you submit it. So yes, we're looking at your performance like we do for everyone. How are you doing in the classroom? But we're also acknowledging, considering, and thinking about involvement. Genuinely, how have you been involved, made an impact? Those essays are really valuable to hearing voice, perspective, who you are as a person that could add to our community, um, and that strong letter of recommendation. Uh, so really, you know, give time, effort to reflect and share a little bit of your story um, in order for us to get to know you um, and, and think about how you'll make an influence and impact in our community. Um, so no one way in, out, but the idea that we really need the full application to get to know you and make those decisions. We've gotten a couple of questions about, you know, what we're looking for, what stands out in the personal essay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so the great thing is there are prompts to guide your writing. Um, so you can think about, um, those are just, intended and meant to be there to spark or, or help you brainstorm uh, what you'd like to share. Uh, we're not looking for, for a particular um, topic or story that you share. The most, um, I think, helpful essays are the ones that are most genuine and authentic as they can be. Um, so the idea with essays that, you know, it's not meant to be like a research paper or a formal beginning body, middle, conclusion. Um, you can take it in whatever direction you'd like to. If you're a storyteller, use that. Um, if you feel that there's humor that's part of your personality, that's okay too. I think the biggest advice is don't um, write about something that you think we want to know about, but truly um, look at those prompts and highlight or reflect on what would you like to share that will only um, assist us in, in getting to know you. Um, so the, the best essays, I think, are the ones that are genuine in, in their voice, authentic in what students are really trying to share. Um, and you can ask for support. So while this is your writing, 
your story, your experiences, feel free to ask a teacher, a counselor, a peer, um, am I sharing the, the message that I'd like? Um, is this really reflective of, of what I was hoping to express? Um, so don't hesitate to seek advice, um, but know that um, you know, the best ones are the ones that are just sharing your voice and perspective. We've gotten a couple questions just about sort of the over, overall sort of uh, campus environment, activities, clubs, opportunities to get involved maybe in research, internship, study abroad. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, absolutely. We, we definitely want you to be thinking about this and consider that in your decision making. Um, we have over 800 student-led organizations, so that says a lot about the involvement, the initiative that students are taking to create things that they care about. Um, so whether that, um, that could be professional organizations within a particular major or program, uh, fraternity and sorority life, where there's that commitment to service, scholarship. Um, and for others, there's, you know, I talked about this public service about Carolina, and that is really evident and seen across so many of the organizations that we have. We want you to continue to be involved or find new things that you're gonna enjoy doing in your college setting. Uh, for some, it could be athletics, like an intramural sport. Um, for others, maybe it's Dance Marathon, which is an annual event that's hosted, that's raising money for St. Jude, which is within the UNC hospital. So a great way to give back for something that's effective and purposeful. Um, and for others, it could be more of a casual thing. Maybe there's a language that you really want to enjoy and practice. Um, we have um, cultural organizations. If there's different parts of your identity, your um, cultural experiences that you want to share and demonstrate on campus from dancing, music, um, to annual events that really um, allow students to expose um, pieces of their history, their traditions, um, that's embraced as well. So um, a lot of variety within that. Um, there's annual events like um, Fall Fest, whether during this time virtual or when we're able to continue to have things in person where you can be introduced to so many of these things and begin that involvement. Um, orientation, first year and transfer student orientation are great ways to begin making those connections. Um, and I would add that as students, uh, if you're admitted to Carolina, we're also creating those connections as you even still consider applying to Carolina. So you're gonna be able to connect with students, ask them how they got involved, what they're choosing to do and why. Um, so variety from professional honor societies to more fun, social, um, to show your talents um, through these involvements. Oh, and then I know you talked about internships, research, studying abroad. Absolutely, every year we, every semester, um, there are uh, professional fairs, so whether internship or job fairs that are bringing companies, organizations to Carolina that want to hire um, students like you. So it could be a summer opportunity, maybe even a fall or spring thing that you do. Um, we are fortunate to be in the Raleigh-Durham area where we have our research Triangle Park area, which offers over 200 companies, whether pharmaceutical industry, um, startup companies that are really eager to have students um, join them, learn, um, and provide their own talents within those organizations. So absolutely great things to be considering um, and, and to be looking forward to as you transition to college. Has anything else come up in the chat that would be helpful? We've got some questions about um, who can write a letter of recommendation um, as a teacher. Uh, I can go ahead and just answer because it, it seems a couple of our students are asking it. Um, so it, as Maria said, it's a core academic teacher from your school, um, from your high school. If that teacher is left, um, you absolutely can still have them write you a letter of a recommendation, but it might not be a bad idea to also have a, a, a high school teacher at your current school write a letter of recommendation. We only require one, but you can um, absolutely submit more than one. Um, some other questions, Maria, are just about sort of Excel at Carolina and, you know, does it help or hurt your chances to be interested? Um, if you're accepted into honors, do you have to do honors or do you have to pick between different programs or if you're not accepted into honors, can you reapply for the honors program? Yeah, great, great question. So 
Um, Excel at Carolina, whatever you indicate interest in um, does not impact your admission decision. So some students don't have any interest in any of the Excel at Carolina opportunities, and that's okay. That's a section that has about 15, maybe now we're up to 18 opportunities that may be of interest to you that you're considering as you think about um, things that you want to happen in your college experience, academic related, maybe a global experience, support services. Um, so look at them, review them. We have descriptions on our website that will help you understand what the program offers. Um, and if you're offered that program in your first year, and you know, for instance, Honors Carolina, um, and you feel that this is really not a good fit for me, or this is a shared enrollment program that I thought I wanted to major in, I no longer do, um, you, you do have the option to change your mind. So it's not binding in any way. It's just a way to help you know as you transition to campus, you know that you're going to be part of this program or have these services um, or be part of maybe um, a cohort or have a fellowship. So it's just additional opportunities that you'll be offered. But please know whatever you indicate interest in is separate from our admission decision. These are just additional considerations, things that you may be nominated for um, if you're admitted to Carolina. And then as far as the Honors Carolina program, um, you know, one thing that is unique about it is while we're limited to the number of students that we can offer as a first year um, student, there's still options for first year sophomores to uh, join the Honors Carolina programs. So there's flexibility with the program. Um, and even, um, you know, there are seats that are available, even if you're not part of Honors, to still take an Honors class. Um, so that's the great thing about the program, the idea that you still can have some aspects of college have that Honors experience utilize our resources or apply even if you're not offered in your first year. And I would say that for any Excel opportunity. So the study abroad fellowship, the those uh, enrollment programs, if you're not offered that in your first year and it was something that you really wanted, students can still apply directly to the professional schools. There are still scholarships and fellowships available for research and study abroad. So this isn't the only opportunity to have access to those um, resources. And um, I wanted, oh, I don't know, Alex, is there, okay. And where can they find that application? Sorry, we just got a couple questions about where they can find the application to honors and all the Excel programs. Yes, um, so the Excel at Carolina survey will, um, you will see it towards the end of the UNC supplemental application requirement. So as you reach the end of the UNC short answers, um, some additional questions that we ask, um, you'll see Excel at Carolina survey, are you interested? You indicate yes, then those opportunities will show up. First will be the honors question, then you'll be asked about our insured enrollment where you can indicate interest in up to three, and then special opportunities like that study abroad, research, some other programs, and you can indicate interest in up to two. So it'll be towards the end of the UNC supplemental application as you complete your um, first year application to UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and then I definitely wanted to make sure that you all saw ways to stay engaged with us. Um, so we are offering um, resources to, to do a virtual tour. So you can go ahead and access that link and take a look at that. Um, and then I know there probably are several questions that are still in the, the chat box. Um, you can communicate directly with us and we are happy to assist in any way um, as you consider your options or complete your application to UNC. By any chance, is there a final question that maybe I can answer as we wrap up? I know we have like a minute or two left. But if not, students can just take the time to um, jot down those resources. Awesome. Well, I just really want to thank 
everyone for their time um, this afternoon. Uh, we, you know, really appreciate the questions that you asked. Um, hopefully we were able to answer the majority of them, but please know that we can continue to be a resource to you. Um, as you consider your options, complete the application. We are here to support you. Um, and we just thank you so much for your interest in time and please keep in touch as, as you need to, but thank you. Thanks for joining us for the session this afternoon. When you close this window, there'll be a very quick four question survey and we appreciate this feedback that you can provide. And also this is just one of many sessions being hosted through CACRO.org. Um, they're still happening for a couple weeks. Uh, in about a week, you'll see the recording for this session also on CACRO.org. Under the programs, you'll see the high school student registration link and you can check it out there if you need to go back and rewatch anything from today's session. Thanks again for joining us.